Real estate 400, 500 is basically taking a few of these tactics and meshing them together. Making an ultimatum is a tactic used to set a deadline. Um, we run into this a lot now if we're going to counter somebody back. Let's just say we have multiple offers and we've got all these people waiting. Sunday at 5 o'clock, we're going to go and try to work with this one offer. And everything was great, except that we wanted more money, earnest money. And we wanted to move up the closing for two weeks. And so we go back to that person and then say, okay, well, let me get back to my clients. If you don't put a timeline on that, you're really hurting yourself on the other offers because those people are sitting they're waiting and you just use them for three hours to try to be able to get someone else to a closing date. These people don't get back to you. So if you're in the position that you've done a multiple offer, be prepared to answer the back immediately because it needs to get done ASAP. I'll put timelines on that. And so if it's 530, it says, you know what, you got till six o'clock to get back to me. I can't tell you how many times, Andy, they said, oh, the, the client went out to dinner. Well, what? You're in a multiple offer situation. You want to get a house or not? Get a hold of them. I had a deal a, a month and a half ago where the agent came to me and said, what do you think of the offer? And I said, it's great, but we have a counter for you. And here's what it is. All of a sudden, I get a call back the next day. And I'm like, they must not have accepted. We must have moved on. And I get a call back the next day and say, so what are you going to do with our offer? <laughs> I'm not kidding you, Chris. I, I sat there and I go, uh, it was countered yesterday at, according to my notes, 9.32 in the morning. And you've been sitting on this for 24 hours. He goes, you can't do verbal communications on an offer. Yeah. I go, oh yeah? I said, when did they change that rule? A lot of times what happens is real estate agents or in, in any negotiation, they go back and forth. They don't write up all the documents every time to support their offer as much as I appreciate that. I mean, you know, the proper way I should have done it then, I guess, is filled out a counteroffer addendum, sent the counteroffer addendum over for them to sign. But instead, I, I, I just, you know, old school me thinks you're going to go ping pong, ping pong back and forth a few times because where they started and where we started are totally different, right? You, you get right. that illusion that, well, you know, maybe we're going to go back and forth. Why don't you run this by, shoot this over the bow and see if they can live with it. And if they can, then I'll get you everything you need to sign. Yeah. Dude, do you always send it in writing or what do you do? I think it really depends. I, I try to not send it in writing, not put my sellers in a position that they're kind of just sitting there not knowing what's going on. What I like to do is I go back to the people and say, hey, here's the counter, boom, boom, boom. You go get that signed, send it back to me, all signed, then yep. I'll get it signed. I'm not going to send out my signatures without having it done, unless it's something real simple. I think so. Yeah. But I think that's another thing, Andy, is that like for myself, in, using all these different tactics is that yep. you can't be the same on everything. I don't have, a, here's what I do on an offer and it's got to go like this and this because it, it doesn't happen that way. You got to be able to read into what the offer is. And, and if you really look at it and kind of take everything into play, you can figure out the best way in which to be able to go back at it. And obviously, maybe not if you're starting, but if you've been in it not myself 33 years, I've seen quite a few of offers that you can kind of figure it out and which way you got to go. And that's why I said real estate 400, 500 is basically taking a few of these tactics and meshing them together to be able to try to get what you, what you need. So, okay, next one. All right. So making small concessions and what small concessions are is just sometimes it's like earnest money or a little on the price. And maybe it's 